Welcome to Beta Talk. It's a podcast that I do. You can find it on iTunes and Spotify. I'm also now putting it onto YouTube, and my YouTube channel is called Beta Teach. I'm known as Beta Teach on my social media channels. Today, we're going to be talking about heat pumps and do you need three phase? So, we're going to be talking about single phase, three phase, so lots of stuff about kilowatts and amps. I might even put at the end of this uh, little video how I used to teach my students Ohm's Law. So that might be very useful. Now today I've got two people that have been with me before on podcasts. I've got Bill. Now Bill is a refrigeration expert, heat pump expert. He's been involved in training. He's a good friend of mine and he's, he's done some, if you haven't heard the podcast we both did at Kenza, uh, go and have a listen to that. And I'm also joined by Nick, another good friend of mine. Now Nick has a company called Thermal Earth. Uh, he's also the UK distributor of Master Therm. Uh, very experienced heat pump engineer. Based in, based in Wales, aren't you, Nick? Yeah. Sunny Wales. We're going to have a general chat about um, this whole thing. So, so on Twitter this week, I've been seeing about some people saying, once again, Bill, we've spoke about this. People saying you can't have heat pumps because the grid won't be able to cope with it. And then obviously if people have EV vehicles, you, you'll have to have three phases coming into your house. Now, Nick, just explain this thing about three phase, single phase. Do heat pumps need to have three phases? The short answer is no, they don't. Um, now, in, in the UK, um, we're principally a single phase market um, to domestic properties and um, you know, with, with typical supplies around 80 amps. Um, where, whereas in Europe, it's, it's more typical to have three phase to, um, the, to, to, a, to a domestic property. Um, you know, in, in the UK, for, for us, you know, I'm working with Masterfin, we've been you know, supplying their single phase units for the um, best part of 10 years and we have the first single phase, we launched the first single phase inverter heat pump back in 2012 that provides up to 22 kilowatts thermal output and we've cascaded those to larger capacities as well. So the short answer is no, they don't, you don't need three phase. Um, but for larger capacities in some aspects, commercial property three phase is better. So, I mean, I think one of the problems, so like just discussing Ohm's Law here a little bit, obviously you've got this thing of where uh, you've got your watts, you divide that by your voltage, and then that tells you your amps. So when people think, oh, 20 kilowatts, that's 20,000 watts, let's divide that by 240 and have this massive number of amps. But if you just explain, it's not the 20, it's not the 20 kilowatts we're thinking about, is it? No, that's right. Yeah. So 20 kilowatts is the thermal output of, of the heat pump, um, you know, using some very simple sums. We want a heat pump working at efficiency, um, a, a coefficient of performance, COP of four. That would be having five kilowatts of, of electric power in, giving 20 kilowatts of thermal heat output. And the 15 kilowatts is the difference that's coming from the ground collector. And that's the energy that we're absorbing from you know, the environment with an air source or ground source. That, that's the difference. That's coming from the environment. Bill, I know you'll be very healthy there. You're drinking water, aren't you? I'm, I'm drinking coffee. I am. <laughs> so, <laughs> Bill, you're, you're, an enthusiast, you're a very big renewables enthusiast across the spectrum. So, obviously, as people start to get EV vehicles, maybe, um, will people need three phases coming into their homes then? I think people who have large cars or um, have multiple cars. <clears throat> they're going to have to consider three phase because the maximum amp, uh, kilowatts that you can charge with is around about seven kilowatts on a single phase. EVs are going to be far more um, uh, disruptive on the grid than uh, heat pumps are. But somebody in the ENA has decided that cars are a good thing and they're not going to be a problem, but heat pumps are. And I think that's mainly because they've got, uh, they don't know how heat pumps actually operate. They've, they just see the, the, the rating on the nameplate, of the, of the power consumption of the, the rated power consumption of the unit, and they go on that. And they think that every time it switches on, that's what it comes on with, with all the backup heaters and everything, all in one go. And the, the way that they categorize the, uh, the, the devices is, I think, is wrong. They've lumped heat pumps in with the wrong category of equipment. They need to have a look at it again and put it in its own category. Uh, 
it's you can get around uh, the the single phase issue quite a lot with with heat pumps. With EV, you're not going to because you're only going to have a limited window to do your charging in at a uh, at a low rate. You're going to need to dump the charge into your battery pretty quickly on some occasions. Otherwise, you're going to get into the high tariff uh, charging. So it all depends on the, the size of the equipment that you, you're planning to use. With a heat pump, you're fixed with, with what the house requires. So, you know, it, it's about the size of the house. With your EV, it depends on how big your ego is and what size car you think you need. <laughs> so, yeah. you, you know, you can cut your, your cloth according to what you, what you want with, a, with, a, with an EV. But with a heat pump, it's really determined by the house. But there are other things that you can do if you're on the edge of, uh, of needing a three-phase unit because you've got a very large house. Then spend some extra money on the insulation. And also on the, the distribution system, because if you can lower the operating temperature of your heat pump, you increase the output in kilowatts, but you reduce the, the, the kilowatt uh, consumption. So there are ways are, that you can design for the power supply that you've got. So if, let's say someone, they're not ever going to be bothered about having an electrical, ve electrical vehicle, but they want a heat pump. Are we saying then it's, you know, they don't really always need three phases? No, you can't mm. say that they always need three phases. Mm. It will depend on the, the situation. In majority of cases, the single phase will be, will be fine. But I've, I've recently found out that the, the, um, the DNOs are concerned about the, the effect of flicker on the, the grid. Flicker is the effect that you get when the lights dim, when something switches on. And what they're concerned about is something that's going to switch rapidly, uh, rapidly to what we would imagine. What they, they think that is that the, the backup heater will be switching on and off in the same way that an iron switches on and off. And we know that they don't. In most cases, the backup heater isn't working at all. It's only used for extraordinary circumstances and that's something that they have to understand but the uh the compressor starting load is not a problem anymore because with inverters driving the compressors starting loads are very low harmonics then become the problem that they're concerned about uh high harmonic uh currents um but that can be got around if it's a good quality heat pump. And they're trying to get the information from manufacturers uh, as to what the, the harmonics are. That's a difficult one to measure. It's a very difficult one to measure because nobody's done it before. The do only you have testing to provide houses that? are in Europe. Do you have to provide? Because obviously you, you're, you're kind of a manufacturer as well, aren't you, Nick? Yeah. Do, do you have to provide information yeah we do I, it's 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 been a recent exercise of of mine to provide all the test protocols for the harmonics and flickers for the full range of units is this with the... my sympathy yeah it it, it, it was painful there was <laughs> there was a lot of back and forth but yeah we look we got there in the end and you know, the long in the long run we think it should simplify the application to um to apply and connect the heat pumps to the grid um, but yeah, at the early days over the last few weeks, months, it's been it's been you know, difficult to get information back and forth. And also, you know, being importers, you know, the 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 the, the level of information that we tend to ask for in the UK is above and over what is, is expected elsewhere in um, in Europe, and it, specifically as well because we're a principally a single phase market, whereas with three phase market in Europe, it's the, the same information doesn't isn't normally required. Um, Back to an earlier point that you mentioned, Bill, with regard to EVs and, and heat pumps, you know, they're a totally different category, category of products. And, you know, with, with EVs, um, it depends whether you want to charge them, or you're able to charge them slow overnight, or whether you want a fast charger. Now, if you want anything over seven kilowatts, you typically do need a three-phase supply, and you want to charge your car as quickly as possible, you know, when the electric is cheap. 
Um, but with a heat pump system, you know, we're typically, you know, a typical system in, in the UK might be on average somewhere around 10 kilowatts. You know, a ground source working well, COP of four, that is taking 2.5 kilowatts of electrical energy to run that at peak. And peak is is by design when it's cold outside, when, you know, by example, by minus three. So it's only at that time that it'll be running at that peak electrical input of 2.5 kilowatts. As the seasons are milder, the, the consumption is much, much lower through the, 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 the hours of the day. And we, you mentioned backup heaters as well. How many homes, domestic UK um, homes, have um, electric power showers and they are on average nine kilowatts plus? And we're talking about a heat pump that's running a compressor at peak with 2.5 kilowatts of electric going in, 10 kilowatts of thermal energy coming out to heat the home when it's minus three outside. You know, the whole um, scenario is totally different. And yeah, we, f we do find, or at least we think the the limited, you know, the expectations of what, um, uh, how, how they think that the heat pumps are going to affect the grid. I don't, I don't think it's as, as bad as, as, as everybody sees. No, they're not going on evidence. They're just relying, just, just looking at them on mm. the, uh, just the rating and mm. making assumptions rather than looking yeah. at them uh, in operation. They're not yeah. trying to, there's, there's no attempt to uh, gain experience of heat pumps operating, they're merely going on theory. Yeah, uh, I will say, you know, back in the um, 2005, 2006, where there wasn't inverter heat pumps and there were fixed outputs and there were some heat pumps being installed without soft starts, you would see significant flicker, um, you know, with um, uh, locked rotor current of, you know, maybe a flicker of, you know, 80 or 90 amps just to get the compressor started. But then we started using soft starts, which brought the starting current down to about 30 amps. And now we use BLDC um, rotary compressors, brushless DC compressors. There's no inertia. There is no starting current, effectively. It just ramps from zero up to its operating current. So we see no flicker at all. What they do, what they do, do is um, they, do, they put um, harmonics onto yeah, they the, do. Yeah, the, the yeah. supply. Yeah. And apparently, it's not the the quality uh, inverters that are the problem; it's the poor quality. I know there's a couple yeah. of makes that I've I've uh, I've seen some test results of, and it's not when they're on full power; it's when they're on minimum power that you get the worst harmonics. Now, the harmonics are occurring at multiple frequencies. It's not just at the standard mains frequency of 50 hertz, as you. You'll probably be aware of this now, uh, Nick, after going mm -hmm. through the, yes. the process yourself. But it's somewhere around about the 40th harmonic. So it's a much higher frequency that they're seeing some spikes. But they're very brief, but they're, very, but they're a very sharp spike, which can be three or four times uh, higher current than the, uh, the expected current. What concerns them is, is that if you get multiple heat pumps in uh, very multiple houses, so they're all connected on the same local grid, yeah. and they all happen to just run at the same frequency just for a moment, and the harmonics join join up, and that's the problem that they have. They are they they claim to have seen. I, I think it's something yeah. that's in it's historical, and and it is possible which really comes down to them saying, well, all heat pumps, all, all not just heat pumps, but it, it applies to anything with a motor, has to be to a certain standard. The, the filters, and this is, that's all it needs is the correct filter put onto the device. They should they be filtered to the correct level. But they're not wanna, saying that. They're just, just looking for test up, results. Yeah. I just want to pick up on something, Bill, that we, we mentioned earlier. You mentioned the ENO, uh, which is an acronym, as we know, for the energy... Um, God, I'm going to forget it now. Networks Association. Energy Networks Association. Yeah. So this I is... Remember their logo from, yeah, very well in recent times. <laughs> so these... Now, you have to, as a manufacturer or distribution, you have to be um, a bit like MCS will will test your products. They do it as well. I just, well, I just want to say that the Energy Networks Association has members from the gas networks and the electricity networks, doesn't it? Which 
which always um, yes, it's it's about the energy distribution, which is always a bit of a because obviously as we know, there's a lot of people message me and say, look, it seems Nathan that we've got H two, you know, hydrogen arguing, which is networks running down. I guess the networks arguing against the people that want heat pumps, and yet they're all kind of the same part of this one association, aren't they? And it's it's all a bit complex. Big. It annoys me and frustrates me because we're not talking about enough about solar thermal. And I think you and I will do one because you, you, your companies do solar thermal that are, that are linked up to your heat pump systems, don't you, Nick? Which I think then is brilliant. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we've integrated solar thermal, d direct solar thermal with, with the ground loop. And, you know, effectively in the winter, we're taking the energy out of the ground. And in the summer, then we're recharging energy back into the ground. And that is a myriad of benefits for the efficient, that's, overall efficiency that to me is the only way to do it it's yeah uh, yeah, uh, yeah. You otherwise can, if you if you're just using it for heating i think you're better to use a pv and run mm -hmm. the heat pump for to be yeah. hot water but as soon as you use the the, the cooling effect of the uh, the ground to provide you with that cooling in the summer which gives you that extra boost of heating um, reheating the ground during the summer yeah then it's a no-brainer and that's a really good idea. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the, as with any heat pump system, the higher the incoming temperature, the more efficient it is. So if you put an energy back into the ground, you can store the, you can make the ground warmer than it was to start with. So when, by the time you get back into the next heating season, your overall efficiency is much, much higher. Separately, you know, by design, we can actually design ground loops a little bit smaller because we're putting energy back in ground in the ground, which will make the overall system cost initial cost cheaper because you don't have to have such a big ground array because you're recharging the ground as well. That's There's also a lot of talk at the moment, and especially in Sibsi and like people like that, about overheating of houses yeah. with the the insulation levels and and the ridiculous way that people run high temperature heating. Uh, they're experiencing uh, overheating, and it's it, which is a control issue. But during the summer now, with houses with lots of glass, people like to have big windows so they can connect with the outside. Uh, and if they're in a, an urban or a city environment, then they don't want to open the windows because of the uh, pollution. So they've got overheating problems in houses. Adding your cooling to the ground loop is, uh, Guys, is an added benefit. Uh, I've just been told I've got less than a minute left because we're only getting 40 minutes and we obviously started this. So I'm going to make it a part two. -er. So I'm just going to say okay. goodbye to everyone and then I'll splice this in with our part two. So uh, okay. <laughs> we'll be back. We'll be back. So guys, I'm going to have to um, Open uh, be easier than last time. reconnect you. So <laughs> let, me just, let me just press...